I'm Jason Jorgensen. It is time for another edition of Husker Chat. We are joined by Sean Callahan, Husker Online, as we talk about year number two for Matt Rule and the Huskers. Sean, glad to have you back. Hope you had a good summer, and here we go. Let's talk football. It's great to be back, Jason, and you know we get to be home four weeks in a row, so a little bit different start than what we've seen in Lincoln the last four years. Certainly a much more favorable opener at home against UTEP. We will get to that. How about this overall fall camp as a whole? What, what's your take from, from all signs? It's been pretty productive, and, and it looks like they've been able to keep the momentum going. Yeah, it's a year two, and I think the history at Nebraska tells you year twos have been successful for about any coach that's taken over at Nebraska. Go back to Frank Solich. He almost won the national title in year two. Bill Callahan beat Michigan in the Allen Bowl, had a great year two. Uh, Mike Riley went to a bowl game in 2016, nine one year, his year two. Bo Pelini, year two, oh nine. They should have beat Texas in the Big 12 championship game. Scott Frost, even in his year two, they didn't have a great year, but they were picked to win the West. So this kind of has that feel like a, it's set up to take a step forward. Nebraska has the schedule. They have a great mixture of veterans returning, and they've added some key players. And obviously, they've upgraded that quarterback position about as much as you can year over year uh, going with Dylan Riola. How about Riola? It, it seems like to this point, granted, there hasn't been a snap. He hasn't played in an official game, but it looks like he has been everything they have wanted and needed him to be. Is that safe to say? Yeah, he he's definitely more mature than you're going to see a guy in his role and his talent level speaks for itself. I think the respect he's earned obviously is how he conducts himself and the professionalism, but then his talent level, you cannot deny what he can do. I mean, he's got great arm talent and he can make the throws. He's really good to Jason at the checkdowns and the short passing plays. And that's been a bugaboo for Nebraska where they have not had good short passing. They have not had good time screen plays. He's going to be able to do some of those things. It's not just the deep ball, but he's going to be as good of a deep ball thrower as we've seen at Nebraska in a while. Uh, he's got a lot of weapons, and I think the receivers around him year over year have upgraded quite a bit. So uh, I'm excited. I'm as excited to watch this opener as I can remember, mainly for him, because he's got the chance to, to be a program-changing player if he plays at the level I think people think he can play at. How about the old line? Now they've been hit by some injuries. It, it looks like they're getting a little thin at, at tackle. How do you see that uh, that position developing? Yeah, they had they had seven guys coming into the year that had starting Big Ten experience. They're down to six. Henry Latoski has battled some stuff, but the key is the five, and they have a good five in terms of experience. They have four starters with over thirty career starts. Bryce Benhart has forty two starts, and then Justin Evans is going to be the fifth starter. He's played games with Latoski in the mix. As long as that group stays together, and look, they don't need Turner Corcoran to be an all-pro. They just need him to be a solid left tackle, and he's proven he can be that when healthy, um, and I do think Riola, his ability to, to play the pocket better. We've had a lot of quarterbacks at Nebraska roll out of the pocket and do things that maybe haven't helped the O-line over the years. Um, hopefully, Riola is able to read that pocket better play play that better on that side but you're right i think the o-line is the key um and you know establishing some of that quick passing game along with the running game to go with the throw game the balance of this offense will help this offensive line out a lot today we're talking with sean callahan of husker online as we preview year number two for matt rule now if there was certainly a bright spot last year it was a play of the black shirts under uh, tony white they made huge improvements they kept nebraska in a lot of games. What are some areas where uh, you expect them to maybe even move forward and be better this year? Well, you look at this unit, um, the depth chart came out officially Monday, and it was about as predictable of a depth chart as I can remember, even the black shirts. I think we all agreed that there's going to be maybe 11 or 12. They ended up giving out 12. So I think that starting 11 or 12 is very solid. And then there's a mixture of youth and some other veterans behind those guys. But I love the defensive line. I think this team is old in the right places to win in the conference. We mentioned the O-line, but the D-line. But then on the back end of the secondary, they have five players that are that have been here for a long time that have all played a lot of football. Um, and I, I think that that group on the back end is going to be a real strength with Isaac Gifford, Deshaun Singleton, Marquise Buford, uh, Tommy Hill, who could be a first-rounder according to ESPN right now. Um, so they've got a really good mixture of players on the backside. You know, linebacker, 
might be the one where there's some questions. Uh, but MJ Sherman um, is as talented as anybody. I mean, he's a five-star player coming out of high school, and he's now ready for his final year at Nebraska. Let's talk about the roster a little bit. A little bit of news made this week. The Huskers end up with a, a former four-star tight end from LSU. What can you tell us about uh, Mr. Mark Wayne and how did he end up in Lincoln? Yeah, that was definitely um, Mac Markway. You know, they added uh, him from LSU, and it came out of nowhere on Tuesday. He went through one week of practice at LSU, just left school, didn't actually enroll in classes or start classes yet, and wasn't in the portal. But you're able to move around on your own. You're just not – you can't have a recruiting process. You can't be courted or contacted legally by teams – and just showed up at Nebraska. And Marcus Satterfield even said on Tuesday, he just found out about it on Monday. Um, but he's here, and you know, I think there's a chance he can play this year. I, I don't know the logistics, but um, you know, I, I think there's some different ways around things for him where he could be eligible to play. He actually has a red shirt he can still use, but he's out of Desmet Jesuit. His dad played tight end at Iowa. Um, so he's a regional player that went to LSU and will come back and play in, in this part of the country again. How strong is that room now for Matt Rule? I mean, yeah, you add him. Carter Nelson's a hybrid. Janiron Bonner is almost a hybrid. But then you have some really solid guys like Borkacher as well to go with Thomas Fedoni. Uh, they have a lot of weapons at that tight end possession position, and there's no question they can utilize that in matchups. And it kind of goes to the motto. They, they love that positionless football where those tight ends can do different things to create matchup problems. All right, how about this Saturday against UTEP? They weren't very good last year. New head coach. Sounds like he did some interesting things on offense at Austin P. How do you see this one on Saturday? Yeah, Scotty Walden, 34-year-old, up-and-coming head coach. He's had success everywhere he's been, and this will be year one. 11 of his Austin P. players followed him to UTEP. Uh, four of them at wide receiver, one of them was a quarterback, and then their best running back who ran for a 1,000 yards. So he brought a chunk of his offense with him. So you're going to see some familiarity. Um, they have an edge rusher named Wes Moreland's his last name, and he'll cause some problems. He's probably a draft pick type level player on the perimeter that can get to the quarterback. Um, that's the one guy to watch as far as getting to Riola and causing some issues. But you would like to think the depth of Nebraska being at home a year two versus a year one program. Nebraska's got a lot of significant advantages in this game. And, you know, the point spread set at four touchdowns right now. So you would like to hope that Nebraska can come out here and, and make quick work of the minors here in week one. All right. Well, hopefully it all comes together. Everybody's happy at about six o'clock on Saturday. And year two will be off to a great start from that. All right. Hey, thanks, Jason. You bet. As always, that's Sean Callahan of Husker Online. He will join us all season long once again for Husker Chat. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Jason Jorgensen.